So you said that you were, say it again, your quarter? Quarter Apache. <laughs> quarter Apache. On your father's side, who are you? On my father's side, uh, German of, or, or Western European. Okay, so only on your mother's side is where the native comes from. <laughs> get um get numbers 1 and 18 real quick. And I want you to get Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. Because as you've been standing up here this whole time, and the problem is, it's when that, who was the brother's name, Richard? As Richard comes by, the people that's supposed to be on the sign that's paying attention, only you have that, that's a rare occasion. When they come up, they learn who they are, they sit in silence, and they take these things in and they process them, critical thinking. It's rare that our people do that. That's why the brother stepped up and was like, we commend him for not leaving after three minutes. You see all of our other people that's out here that's supposed to be on this sign, they just walk by, headphones, they don't care. But you said from your father's side, let's see, because you said that you find out, you wonder if you are on this sign or not. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, on a, right. Okay, correct, read. The book of Numbers, chapter uh, one and verse 18. <laughs> And they assembled all of the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. They declared their pedigree by the house of their fathers. That's the reason why we're up here speaking to the so-called blacks and Hispanics to return to who you are. Because our people don't pay attention to anything. All this information is coming out that nobody can refute, but everybody walks on by. But if I were to give somebody a lie, they might take that, digest it, go back and tell the rest of their folks what was in their family, their friends, or whatever. But we up here go according to the Father because the Most High God goes according to the Father. So you, sir, will not be on this sign. I do know where your lineage comes from, though. You said you're German, right? Go to um, Genesis 25 real quick. I want you to read that. Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter hey, 10 and verse 7. I have. Oh. Yeah, verse 6. Verse 6. Folly is set in great dignity. It says that folly, foolishness is set on high in America. A lot of people don't believe that, but I'm going to make a point later. But foolishness is set in great dignity in America. Start at verse 23. The book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bow. So when you read this story, you have Isaac and Rebekah. Isaac is from this lineage on this sign also. Rebekah, they father, his wife was Rebekah, they fathered two children. The Lord said, read that again. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Two manner of people are in thy womb, and two nations shall be separated from thy bowels. Go ahead. And the one shall be stronger than the other, than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. One shall be stronger than the other. Two boys came out. One's going to be stronger. The first one that comes out is supposed to be prophesied to serve his younger brother. That's the way the Most High God set this up. Go ahead. Verse 24, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were two, there were twins in her womb. So Rebecca had twins in her womb, but these are not identical. They're fraternal twins. Identical twins form when one sperm fertilizes one egg to become two babies. And fraternal twins form when two sperms fertilize two eggs to become two babies. Hmm. Looks like we have more time. For normal birth, the man injects his sperm into the female's uterus to fertilize her eggs. And after 8 to 10 months of gestation, a baby is born. But with twins, two babies burst out. So what's going on? While males produce a whole load of sperm, females produce only about one egg a month, each ovary taking a turn every other month. But sometimes, each ovary produces an egg on the same month. If both of these eggs get fertilized, then you get fraternal twins. Because these twins are formed from completely different eggs and completely different sperm, they are no different than any other sibling. They are each their own separate genome, compiled from their parents, and can even be different genders. When the sperm meets the egg, they become a zygote. Sometimes a zygote will spontaneously divide into two zygotes. Since each zygote has the same DNA, they will form two people that are genetically identical. Identical twins. Times after the zygote splits, the two zygotes will conjoin. This is how conjoined, or Siamese twins, are formed. 
Go ahead. Verse 25. And the first came out red. All over like a hairy garment. Now if I'd ask you, what's your name? Sean. Sean, if I were to ask you, this says the child comes out red and hairy all over. These people, this brother read earlier, that all the people that God created were not taken away from the earth. They still survive today. If I were to ask you what people are referred to as, they, they look more red in color in hue than anybody else. Yeah, you can do stereotypes. This still applies. Native Americans? I think Native Americans more... Yeah, but that's, I get what you're saying, that's a stereotype, but they don't look like that, though. They don't look like that. Who do they call rednecks? Even your own people call themselves rednecks. Right. You said what? Country white folks, okay. Up north white folks, too. <laughs> <laughs> and they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. So the person that came out was red, and they usually, typically, the so-called white man's a very hairy individual. Read on. And after that came his brother out, and, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. So you never, when you read this, it tells you the description of Esau. He's red, hairy all over. When you read about his brother come out, they don't describe his color. They give you no physical features. Why? Because when even we read all the way back in Genesis with Adam and Eve, you had them men of color. They were raised like that. Esau was the first person that came out looking like this. This color that he looked like. That father of that man named Esau is the father of the people that are walking around today that are red and hairy all over. That would be your, your father, that would be your progenitor. That's where you will come from. So your nation will be Esau. Esau is not on this son. Oh yeah, I got it. Go ahead. And his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Now go to Genesis 37. I want to make a point. Oh, okay, that's good. Go ahead. Read verse 27. Yeah, go ahead. 27. Verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. It says that when the boys grew up, Esau became a cunning hunter. You look at, like, this is, that's why the scriptures is so beautiful, because everything brings out, the Most High God set this up a certain way for prophets, the people that came from this nation, to write these things. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, all these people were from this nation. Now, the Most High gives descriptive things to describe who the people are today, because whenever we bring this book out, nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows who they are, except you have people that look like you that claim that they're Jewish. They're, they don't necessarily have a, uh, a problem, or they don't recoil when they say that they are the God's chosen people. But whenever we stand up here and we say that people got a problem with us, they'll call it hate speech. But the characteristics of Esau, where he was a cunning hunter, go ahead. A man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man. Dwelling in tents. Jacob was a plain man, a simple man that dwelt in tents, but Esau was a cunning hunter. Let me ask you a question. What was your name again? I'm sorry. Sean. Uh, what's the last restaurant you ate at? When you go somewhere to have dinner, you eat steak? No, oh, you're a vegan. Okay. You ever ate steak before? I'm assuming. Okay. How, how would you order it? If you were still eating steak today, how would you order it? Medium red. At the restaurant here, we kind of look at um, color, you know, and feel of the steak rather than, you know, poking it with a thermometer or poking it with a fork or because really you never want to do that. Once you poke it, you lose juice, you lose blood, you lose juice, you lose blood, you lose juice, you lose blood, and you start to lose the, the quality of the good steak. First thing, uh, when cooking steaks to, to, to a certain temperature, you have to realize every grill is different. My medium rare steak is gonna cook a lot faster than if you're trying to cook it on a barbecue grill. A trick that I learned in school, I'm using your hand to just check the, the softness of the steak, when you touch your finger here, 
and you see it's very soft right here and you just kind of run down this would be rare this would be medium rare this would be medium and this would be well done medium rare for us is about seven seven minutes and 30 seconds a nice caramelized deep brown color we don't play with the steak we don't turn it and turn it again and keep turning it we turn it once we season it we put it on the grill when we see that nice caramelized oniony looking color we flip it once and you can kind of see how soft like when we do with the hand when you press in how soft it is and as you see here these are going to be our well dones in our medium well Took down a verse <laughs> 20. I just saw it. Right there. Go ahead. 28. Read it 20. Verse 28. And Isaac, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat his vintage venison. But Rebecca loved Jacob. Uh, go ahead. Verse 29. And Jacob saw uh, saw pottage, and Esau came from the from the field, and he and he was faint. So now it's giving you descriptions of these two. Jacob was starting pottage, meaning there was blood still in the thing that he was cooking. Esau comes very tired from the field. That's why I said these characteristics linked up with your people. These things match up with our people. The same ones on the sign. That's how we can figure out who we are today. Go ahead. Cause you don't. Do you know anybody that's in your family, cousins, whatever that call themselves Esau? Go ahead. Verse 30, and Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. It says that Esau said, feed me with that same red pottage. And these are the characteristics. First, he's red, he's hairy all over. Now, of course, not everybody fits this 100%. Because people, like you read in the scriptures about our people being of, uh, of color. Some people say, you have uh, Jeremiah saying that he was black unto the ground. But you have different uh, uh, skin tones of brown, from brown to very dark. Y'all characteristics that y'all red, hairy all over. Typically, that's all y'all are. That's why I said, even y'all, your nation is proud to call yourselves um, rednecks. Number three on this, on this uh, country for life CD huh. is a song that I think is an awesome beat, man. Just, just all around awesome. It talks about. You know, I am a redneck. I might be a redneck. And in, anybody who's seen Riding High follows me or follows the Georgia boys know we had some magic on that. So I caught my boy D-Thrash up, and he jumped on it. I uh, beat my little round up there from Kentucky. Shout out to him. Y'all check Twang around out. Uh, but, yeah, it's awesome, man. Y'all going to love this. Y'all will be singing this one. to say that. A lot of y'all people, when y'all eat just like this man, y'all were cunning hunters. Because you see, you don't necessarily see a normal thing for a man to go up into a tree and then pour deer piss on his leg just to get animals to come near him. Y'all people come up with stuff like that. They're very cunning hunters. With animals, right, very smart. With animals and with people. How can I improve duck hunting as we know it? This is awesome. I'm gonna turn this into the greatest duck blind ever. What if you took a pontoon boat, which is more stable than a regular boat, attached a motor to it, built a state-of-the-art blind, and provided it wherever ducks go, in any water, in any condition? That was the birthplace of the aqua blind. A party barge 
for duck hunters. Huh, I'm going to get me some fried chicken. I gotta get some gas. When you pull up to a gas station in our parts, that is the mecca center of what goes on. Hey, friendly old boy, in that pickup. They're all coming to take a look at our aqua blind. When you pull a duck blind there, that is revolutionary, the news of this will spread like wildfire. We ease this thing in there, and we get into stealth mode. If you see us come riding by, don't be alarmed. That's just get us. Gun. Don't get your gun. People were intrigued. I could see people's minds. They were struggling to identify with what they were seeing. Boom, boom! You suckers are dead! Granted, that was mainly because Sal was in our blind while we were getting gas. Boom, boom, boom! Sal, and that's exactly what a duck's gonna think is. Oh, boom, boom, boom! All the hours dead. Why are you trying to scare everybody? I'm just checking to make sure it works. After all that's been done, I'll have to say, I'm really proud of this invention. We're free, boys! I'll be dead good. We're hey! A ship to sail! When you're trying to make something historical, there's always a few bumps in the road. I can't see anything. Hang a hard left, Burton. Wrong way. Hard left! Do what? Oh, hard left! Oh, 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 oh. I can't hear nothing over the motor. Hey! You're going in circle! Hang a right! So I need to go right. Go to the left. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! I can't uh, see anything. Right. Reverse. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Bottom line, we have assembled one of the greatest duck hunting warships the world has ever known. We're going where no duck blind has ever been or has ever gone before. Do the same thing with people. You're, like, if, you, if I were to ask you who rules the world today, who would you say? What nation of people rule the earth today? What's the superpower on the earth today? Capitalism. Capitalism? What place rules the earth today? I don't know. No clue? No, I have many clues, but it depends on what you mean by rule. Like, Who's making all the, like for instance, if Iraq or Iran or anybody else, if they get out of pocket, who sanctions them? America. Okay, thank you very much. In a few moments, I'll be signing an executive order imposing hard-hitting sanctions on the Supreme Leader of Iran and the Office of the Supreme Leader of Iran and many others. Today's action follows a series of aggressive behaviors by the Iranian... Who runs America? Who makes all the laws here? Who charges people taxes here? Who do we have to go to to get a birth certificate? But what nation are people run the government? Like you, if I, if I... Well, no, no, I'm trying to figure out an answer. No, I'm not avoiding it. Right, I'm just asking a simple question. What people, what typical people, they, they, make, they charge you for a water bill? What people do you have to go to a death certificate, birth certificate? Uh, if, you, if you got a problem, but who runs the government? What people do you typically see in the government? You set up your constitution. Okay, that's all I was looking for. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, that's the answer that's correct. That's what I'm asking. Right. Why would you argue that? Well, because it's the state of the country in the United States. Uh huh. Um, it's based on the folks of the white nations. I mean, but that's not a disagreement. Yeah, that's not a disagreement. Right. Okay, I thought you were saying that you had a problem with that answer. Oh, okay. Genesis 37. And this is like, I want you to get Obadiah real quick. Obadiah 1 and 10. I think it's 10. You don't mind if I sit up here? No, I don't care. <laughs> um, 37. No. Keep going. 40. Nah, nah. Genesis 37 is uh, uh, the man in the field, the, 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 the blessing. Yeah. No, it is 37. No, you're right, 27. I'm sorry. Don't turn the nation. 43. So. But it's a good teaching moment for somebody else. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Again, we're not the people that police anybody. We can't do that. So I, it don't matter to me. That's why I said that. But this is the reason why we're bringing this out is because people need to identify and they need to be honest. People with truth need to be honest. The problem is, is that people, you got the Ciroc on you, give Ciroc 4 and 23 real quick. The problem with, with truth in this place is why we read earlier about folly is set on very high. 
anything that's crazy and wicked is all play in this place. Any place you want to go, hold on. Yeah, 123. The book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 23. Every frame, not to speak when, when there is an occasion to do good. It says, refrain not to speak when there is an occasion to do good. Whenever we speak things that are right and correct, people have a problem with it. Because folly in this place is set on high. That scripture alone in Ecclesiastes will sum up America. That one scripture. Because everything here is about foolishness. Everything. If I ask you if an island of men are placed by themselves in Hawaii and tell them to sustain themselves without women, can they do that? No. Exactly. They're all going to die out because they don't have no women. Now, we think our people in this book, same thing with the brothers standing up here, we think it's normal for a man to be with a woman. Some people might call me crazy for that. They would say, love who you want to love. That's insanity. That's what God says insanity is. But the people that here that run this place, they push those policies and they say it's okay. It's okay. They passed a law years ago when they had uh, Obama pass the uh, same-sex marriage. Under that stack of bills, they passed a law for pedophilia. But they haven't brought it out in California yet. But a lot of people think that that's fine, though. Because they'll have a thing where they have, uh, I don't know how many genders is on the earth today. <laughs> they got a, a man, a woman. Um, we was talking about making a joke the other time about being uh, having trans credit. Because I wish I could go to the bank and just tell them, you look like, I look like a black man, but my credit's white. That's what I, I want to make a joke about stuff like that. Because it, it matches. It matches. But they have, and it, to it, now, it's, now, uh, nowadays it doesn't seem like it's crazy because they come with everything today. You have people that said it's okay for a child to be able to, at six or seven years old, to be able to sleep with a grown man. That's crazy. That's crazy. I like you shook your head on that. This madness. You want to stop and listen, brother? Come on, man. Read that. Thirty-seven. Uh, is there a bathroom around here? Subway. I'll actually return. All right, I'm, I'm gonna hold you to your words, Sean. It's about to die. Sean, I'm glad you kept your word. I'm glad you kept your word, Sean. All right, so check this out. Before we were. I was bringing the message out about kind of deciphering who the people on the earth are today. And it's important to know that because whenever, like for instance, people on the earth today, they really pay attention, they think, not necessarily verbatim out of the Bible, but people believe in Christ. You believe in Jesus Christ? I believe. What's your religion? Uh, I'm agnostic, I guess you could say. But you believe? I'm spiritual and I believe uh, that Jesus Christ was here on earth. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so folly set on high, essentially. That's what we was reading earlier. Foolishness is set on high. Because you can't say that you're, you don't believe in God and then you, you, know, you say you believe in yourself. You believe in Jesus, though. Okay. Kindness and love. Alright, once you keep that in mind. Once you keep that in mind. Get back to Genesis 27. I'm going to tackle that in a second. I'm glad you came back, so I'm, I'm, I like a man of his word. Verse 38. not a mistake that you just stepped up here. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 38. Because this is still dealing with the two brothers that came out of Rebecca's womb, Jacob and Esau. Go ahead. And Esau said unto his father, Even has thou... Has thou be one blessing by my father? Has thou but one blessing, my father? Because the story goes, Jacob basically covers his hands, his, his mother covers his hands with a hairy um, a garment from an animal to make him resemble the physical representation of his brother Esau. Because remember it said Esau came out hairy. Jacob wasn't like that. But his mother put garments on him to make him hairy to go to his father and get the blessing from his father. But people, some people will look at the story of Jacob and be like, that's deception. But the Lord already said that the old is going to serve the younger. So it was already set up like this. However it was going to transpire, Jacob was the one that's going to get the blessing. So Esau, his older brother, does not get the blessing. So he finds out that Jacob was the one that put the garments on him. He got the blessing. He leaves. Esau comes and he finds out that the blessing didn't go to him. It went to his brother. So now he asks his father, Isaac, don't you have a blessing for me? Go ahead. This will be your descendants. Go ahead. Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. 
And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Go ahead. And Isaac said, and, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of the heaven from above. The fatness, he's, he's telling, Isaac is telling his oldest son, um, Esau, your dwelling is going to come a point in time where you're going to dwell in the fattest parts of the earth. I Meaning you're going to have the best of the best. Uh, you're going to be able to work the, the, the person that's going to be dictating things. You're going to be running things. People are going to look up to you to be able to solve matters. They're going to do stuff like that. That's your forefather. And that happened. Any idea when that happened? Yeah. Because this is Esau will be the so he will be the first man that was a so-called white man. His descendants are going to be dwelling in the fatness of the earth. That's there's still, let me answer the question. It's still happening today. Go ahead. Verse 40. And by thy sword shall thy live. Say that again. And by thy sword shall thy live. Now he said that he's going to be dwelling in the fatness of the earth, but he said that by your sword, is you're gonna, that's how you're going to be dwelling. Do you agree with that statement? To, to attain your nation, to attain the fatness of the earth and the great things on the earth, Y'all have acquired those land masses and things how? Right, warfare. They always talk about the good things white people did in their history. What about the bad things when they tried to get rid of us? That was really overwhelming to kind of experience. When you talk to the young people, young Native Americans at that high school, they don't necessarily think that the European settlers were settlers who saved this country. They were the ones who invaded. They were the ones who took. So what do you think about when you think whites? They're mean to us so much. When we found out what the word wasichu means, which is he who takes the best meat. Damn. He who takes the best meat. He who takes the best meat. He's telling, Isaac is telling his oldest son, um, Esau, your dwelling is going to come a point in time where you're going to dwell in the fattest parts of the earth. Meaning you're going to have the best of the best. Which is what they call white people. You could understand from that perspective, right? As the people who are, you know, who are originally in this land. And then these invaders come in and they take, right? You can see why they call them that. Why they called them that and still call them that. Now, mind you, for some people, that might be, oh my God, that's a racialized thing against white people. But who's framing that? The construction of racism has benefited white people, not people of color, certainly not Native Americans. It really exposes what happens when people feel less than. No one wants to feel as if they're being discriminated against. What I hope this film does is get us closer, right, to the fuller reckoning and history of this country. Right, go ahead. <laughs> and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass. There's gonna be a time that's gonna come to pass for you, Esau, go ahead. When thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from thine, uh, from off thy neck. Now there's gonna be a time, because Jacob was given the blessing now, but he's telling Esau there's gonna be a time when that yoke of iron is gonna come off of your neck and you're gonna rule. On January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. But contrary to popular belief, the act itself did not abolish slavery. The proclamation was issued based on the president's constitutional authority as commander in chief of the armed forces. It was strategically done as a wartime measure. The proclamation applied only to slaves in states that were in rebellion in 1863, namely South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, Arkansas, and North Carolina. The law exempted Tennessee and portions of Louisiana and Virginia that were occupied by the Union and left slavery untouched in the border states of Maryland, Delaware, Kentucky, and Missouri. Also, the Emancipation Proclamation allowed the former slaves to serve in the Union Army and Navy. That opened the door for the gradual enlistment of almost 200,000 black men. 
slavery would not become illegal until the 13th Amendment was officially ratified in December 1865. Read on. Verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him.